and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Eugene Edwards, I'm your erstwhile host, and today we're looking at seven of our favorite epic heavy metal riffs with a very, very special guest. Uh, we'll show you the riffs in action and give you some tips on how you, uh, why they rock and how you can start playing them as soon as possible. And helping us with today's topic, very special guest, Sydney Ellen. Say hello, Sydney. What's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think everyone's doing well. I'm sure they're happy to see you. It's been a while since you've been on the show, but of course, everyone's very familiar from the, the site because you teach so many lessons. We're going to talk about that. Now, normally at this point, I'd introduce our dear friend, Dylan. Uh, but unfortunately, he can't be here with us today. He had a previous engagement. Uh, but don't worry, because he'll be making his presence known. Oh, he's going to weasel his way on this show either way. <laughs> that's that's basically what I'm saying. I mean, that's just, it's a fact. So so you will be seeing and hearing Dylan. You'll be feeling him as it, so, as it goes. But uh, until then, Sydney is a guitarist, songwriter, and live performer. Graduated from the Berkeley College of Music, my alma mater. She went nice. much more recently than I did, uh, and she graduated. That's actually key. Um, she was recently <laughs> she recently featured on Nick's, Nikki Six's uh, radio show, Six Cents, and of course she's been a favorite instructor on our site. Sydney, tell us what you're the, about the guitar you're playing, and I want you to show it off. All right, and and thanks so much for that very kind intro. That was awesome. Ah. <laughs> very nice words. Uh, so today I'm playing a, a Jim Root Telly, and um, yeah, it's been one of my favorite guitars for for quite a while now. Um, I just really like the neck on this ebony fretboard and it's just super, super basic, you know, really, really straightforward, you know, nothing too crazy, um, but it works for the metal and the rock and roll that we're about to play today. <laughs> Two humbuckers. Yeah. And is it a three-way switch or, I'm sorry to get into the weeds here, but I'm curious about this. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got a three-way switch here and then, okay. um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just, just a volume knob, you know, really, really basic. And I just loved how clean it looked. We've got, you know, black, um, uh, knobs here for the for yeah. the tuners and you know it was just really easy to work with and yeah let's hear it just go yeah. crazy All right. oh keep going come on keep, <laughs> keep going, going keep going, going. Oh, yeah keep going just go nuts <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sounds perfect for some Slipknot, I think. Uh, yes. This is a, an HSH Strat uh, that was actually just sitting here on the rack when I got here today. I, I wish I could tell you more about it, but I just thought, oh, I haven't thought about what I knew I was going to need humbuckers for today's episode. And it turns out it's got black and chrome pickups. The uh, humbuckers, look at that's pretty. That's pretty heavy. I like that. So I don't know. Hopefully, uh, who, who knows? I may get some sticky fingers and it may come home with me today. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's begin. Uh, let's give a, a, a shout out to our viewers around the world before we start. Everybody in the U.S., obviously, but also we have some viewers in, in Australia, Brazil, Abregado, and Canada. Oh, that's Canada. Anyway, <laughs> Sydney and I are going to walk through some of our favorite metal riffs from Fender Play site. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Fair warning, these riffs are epic, they're monstrous, so make sure you check out the detailed lessons that are uh, on the site after the show. And Sydney's going to start us off with a classic. Go ahead, Sydney. All right, uh, real quick, what is this classic? <laughs> oh, you don't know? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it, you're uh, you're going to go with uh, Breaking the Law. Breaking Priest. the Law. <laughs> Super fun. Nice. <laughs> so why did you choose this one? What, why, why did this one jump out to you? What really jumped out to me was just the ability to play those open strings. And, and without having any chords in there, you really have the ability to really just make it, it scream when you're working with it. So um, yeah, I just like that it's just a power like open string riff that we've got going. Right. And I love that minor third that... And then you like kind of give a little bit of a vibrato on that C yeah. natural, kind of just gives it a little kind of a lean, um, kind of an, a, a, just a touch of an anger there. Uh, and I remember that video too. So it, it was fantastic. They're, they, uh, I think they, uh, did they rob a bank in a convertible or something like that? I don't know. It seems like a really <laughs> bad plan because you'd be easily identified. But uh, now while Sydney and I play a bunch of songs from the site, please drop your favorite metal riffs in the comment section. Or maybe what was the first metal riff you learned? Or maybe you're working on one right now and, and just uh, let us know about it. Let's hear, here. here's another one. This is from another uh, uh, great British band. This is by S Saxon. This is called Strangers in the Night or 747 is actually the, I think more of the official title. But I love this one a lot. This is, uh, let's see. It's, um Oh, 
one more time. So why I love this thing. So this is this is combines two of my favorite things about riffs, which is power chords and single notes. So we have the E, C, and D, and A power chords. And then you get to walk it down on the low E string. No, sorry. And then it resolves back up to the one chord. So it's got this nice symmetrical wrap up thing. You kind of know where the riff begins. You know when it ends. Uh, and uh, I, I just kind of love the, the, and I also love playing the E chord and then going to C. Is that is that harmonic minor? I don't know. Sydney, what is it? Oh my God, it's put an E. Theory, theory on the spot. I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. I guess. I'm yes. pretty sure it is. Yes, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, you know what? Don't ask us comments or don't ask questions in the conversation because we don't know what we're talking about. We're just having fun with these what? riffs. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course we do. I think we know um, a lot. <laughs> so, yes, we know a lot, uh, and uh, you know more than I do. So, yeah, the mix of power chords and single notes. It kind of it's kind of like is another good example of single note going to power chords sort of yeah. thing. So that's why it feels like a real classic, classic riff to me. Um, now let's take a moment to discuss some tone tips, Sydney. Uh, what do these riffs have in common so far? So far, I would say these riffs have got a lot of distortion. Yeah. A lot of distortion. So whatever you're, you're cranking up at home, you know, put on some distortion and you're going to have some fun with these metal riffs. I think also too, when we play, you know, when we're learning a, a new riff or a song, um, and sometimes you're playing it, you're like, dang, like that doesn't sound right. Like I, I got to fix something with my fret hand or I got to fix my fingers. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's just the tone, right? And so, yeah, yeah. like immediately you're, if you crank up that tone, you work up that distortion, it's just going to open up that, that riff a little bit more. So Right. And I tend to make more faces when I, when I, when I uh, <laughs> use distortion. I, I wrinkle my All nose more. I snarl. It just does something. To it. In fact, I was, <laughs> and I rarely get to play with this much distortion on the show. So I'm, I'm going to have a little, I'm going to have a lot of fun today with you. I'm just going to randomly just do this uh, and be obnoxious. Uh, okay, uh, Sydney, what's your next riff? Uh, my next riff, wait, you're going to have to tell me which one it is. What's oh, next? I'm so sorry. I keep thinking <laughs> you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. Okay, so this one, this has come up a lot lately. Uh, this is Crazy Train, uh, of course, uh, it's played by Randy Rhodes on, on uh, Ozzy Osbourne track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Classic. So, so I think that has that same thing, right? We're in the minor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hear that note. Right so break this minor. break this lick down for us. Why is this thing? Why is this so indelible? Uh, I I'm loving the the bit of a pedal on this one. So we keep pedaling on on that on that E string. We're hitting the second fret right here. Right. We keep coming back to that note. So we're just holding our holding our first finger right there. Um, I just think that makes it so cool going back to that pedal. And you kind of hear the dissonance between all the notes coming back and forth. You know, it, it's just great, and it, and it works well if you're if you're working on some alternate picking too. I played it with down picking just now. Uh, but feel free, like if you're working on it and you're trying to get a little bit faster, throw in some alternate picking and it can get really fun. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I uh, when I played the Saxon riff, I, I accidentally did some alternate picking and it should have been all done. But I'm so I'm <laughs> such a country guy that I couldn't help but like almost swing it a bit. So I, I have to brush up on my metal playing myself real quickly, though. What do you mean by pedal? Oh, a pedal. So um, uh -huh. I guess in my own words, a pedal would be a note that we keep coming back to. And it's almost almost like a drone. So while you're hitting other notes, you have that first note ringing out kind of over them. That would be a, a sort of a pedal. Or in this case, we keep coming back to it. Um, so that, that's what we would call a pedal, I guess, in, in just my own words right now. Um, I'm sure you can find a, a better definition elsewhere. But uh, yeah, it's cool. It creates like a, a back and forth and it, it really like perks up our ears when we listen to it. I think that's why we love that riff so much. <laughs> Yes, I, in fact, a, a later riff is going to definitely have pedal on a on one of the higher strings that I'm going to play. So nice. I'm glad we covered that. But yeah, when we say pedal, we didn't talk about an actual effects pedal. We meant the right. musical <laughs> term for this this note that constantly we we constantly return to. In this case, it's that uh, F sharp at the second fret or low E string. You see. Um, yep. Now uh, some riffs from the audience already. Johnny C35. He mentions Master of Puppets. Of 
course. Um, Jerry L. mentions Iron Man, which, uh, Jerry, hopefully you, you don't lose any digits on your fingers like, uh, like our man in Black Sabbath had to, uh, to play that one. Kevin G., Back in Black, that's a great one. That's a fantastic one. Uh, David Gollum, Rock You Like a Hurricane. That's another great, another one, great power chord riff. And uh, Lamara, uh, you mentioned Holy Diver by Dio. Lamara, may I say, please stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right. We're going to take a quick break right now because our friend Dylan couldn't resist being on the show, even though he couldn't be here. Uh, he wants to give all you learners at home a tip for getting some extra chaos out of your metal playing. So Dylan, please take it away. You let me know whenever you want me to go. Whenever you're ready for me, you let me know. Just whenever it's time. No, you can go now. You sure? Okay. So you're ready for me to start right now. Okay. Dil okay. Yes. We're yes. On. If you're pre-taped, why okay. are we arguing? Right. Hey. Hey, everybody, it's Dylan with Fender Play. I've got a quick tip for you. This is a metal tip, right? It's not for everybody, just for the metal players out there. So you've played guitar. You've got your guitar. You've got a pick, right? Normally, when you play the guitar, you angle the pick directly at the strings, and you get a sound like this with distortion on it. Now, I want to show you the quick tip. Quick tip. You're going to angle the pick about 30 degrees and we're gonna get more pick noise. It's gonna create chaos. Good, so let's hear it straight on. That's pretty good, but it could be more metal. You can hear it, right? You can hear the chaos, the cavernous sound that your high school band teacher would have rejected instantaneously. That's how you know it's metal. That's how you know. Now, I'll show you very slowly in another example here. So here's straight on the strings. Again, that's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. Here's angled. You hear the string, you hear the pick rubbing against the strings every time. It also helps you play really fast if you're interested. Oh, there he goes. So that's it. That's it right there. That's the quick pick tip, right? Angle the pick. Angle the pick 2021. Back to you guys. <laughs> thank you oh my gosh it was it was just like him oh all right well he is our bumblebee dylan thank you so much for that was uh lamara says funny watching dylan play metal with a b-bender telly i agree there is <laughs> that is that's a it's a lot of variety there in one shot isn't it lamara all right uh so now here's a riff that requires a drop d tuning i'm gonna take took my low e string while dylan was yakking away there I tuned it. So a lot of metal will do this. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll drop the entire guitar down a full step or right. everything goes down to C or so. But this one's just a simple drop D thing. And also it features a pedal. In fact, at the very top, because I'm going to play my open E string the whole time while I travel on my B string. This is uh, uh, Doing Time by Avenged Sevenfold. And about this one all right so when we drop that low e string down to open d we get this uh we're talking about power chords a lot well this this way we get away with three we get a root fifth and then a root again on our uh, top or low three strings and then we can easily just take a, one finger and bar across one fret so it kind of makes your heavy metal riffage a lot easier and that's why you can do these So if you want to create your own metal riff, try dropping that low E string down a little bit. Also, I caught myself, I, I wasn't playing it properly at first, palm muting. Uh, Sydney, what can you tell us about palm muting and, and its role in so many of these riffs? 
Oh, yeah. Palm muting. Very, very important. I even find myself using palm muting. I probably even used palm muting today on a couple of those riffs just because it's so comfortable. Um, but yeah, it really like what would I say? It brings kind of like a growl to everything. And, um, you know, we don't want to totally mute the strings. We still want some some noise coming through. Um, but really for palm muting, I would I would say use um, use like this part of your hand. Um, you can use the side of your palm or in some cases I would actually use the palm itself and I'm just going to lay my hand flat on the guitar. So if you're if you're doing this sideways palm, you can do that too. I think it's sometimes um, it, it, it's a little bit hard to reach over on the string. So that's why I would say you want to lay your palm flat, you know, and then when you when you palm you, we just get that growl in these riffs and it's super, super important um, as far as like, you know, just tone and getting getting the essence of, the, of these metal riffs down. So yeah, like that's a palm mute versus if I just don't bring, it just creates a different sound here. So yeah. Yeah, it feels like, like the percussiveness of, of each of each downstroke really, really comes through. It's almost like you're imitating the kick drum somehow, right? right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's got like a, a punch, a punch to it. Um, and especially if you if you've got that distortion on, like we talked about earlier, it's really going to really going to help these riffs if you're playing them. A couple of questions for you, Sydney. Sure. Uh, Dan Nicolini asks, what is that beautiful metal pick guard on the guitar behind you? <laughs> that is a custom <laughs> a custom pick guard made by a, a friend, a friend of mine. <laughs> is there any way we can get a, a closer look at it? Or, uh, or is, it in, in, is it inconvenient to reach with your headphones? Uh, oh, oh, there you go. No, look, Derek took care of it. Cool? Way yeah. to go, Derek. All right. All right. There we go. Yes, it's a, it's a beautiful pick guard. It's made by my friend. So if you have questions, uh, shoot me a message. Um, there you go. Just, yeah, just. Yeah, let me know. But yeah, it's a it's a custom piece, and yeah, I've got my my couple Fender guitars here with me. Excellent. Uh, it's a lot of fun gear behind you, actually. Uh, and <laughs> Scott Fogelman on YouTube is asking: Is metal more in major or minor keys? Oh, um, I guess we can't put it in a box fully, but uh, I would say mostly in minor keys. Yeah, yeah. Mo we like hearing that minor, minor third is. I think. Yeah. Pretty much most of the well, yeah, most of the ones we're playing today do. So yeah. for the most part, yeah. and, or, and sometimes actually with Crazy Train though is a great example. Though that riff is in an F sharp minor, right. but then when it goes into the verse, it really brightens up to the A major and has yes. that because it has this E major triad over the A, which is a very major key sounding thing, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good thought on there. I, I didn't think of that. Um, but yeah, I would say like in metal, you know, we're primarily using uh, the minor, but also in metal, you have to remember, we like to break the rules. Um, so we're breaking <laughs> a lot of rules here. So we can also use major in some cases, especially in this crazy train riff. So there are there kind of yeah. aren't any rules, but we tend to right. gravitate towards minor. <laughs> no, Jason O says, it seems like you're playing with mostly downstrokes. Is this true? Uh, probably for today, yes. Lots, lots of downstrokes. Um, I am an alternate picking fan. I think it, it can be very efficient to use alternate picking in your playing and incorporate that. Um, but yeah, for these for these metal riffs, definitely we're gonna definitely use. Yeah. Especially, I think I did that on the crazy train. That's gonna give a, a little bit more punch um, mm -hmm. to that, and it's gonna give you a little bit more power behind those riffs. Right. Yeah, there, there is a, a bit of a difference when it's all downstroke. There's an aggression, aggression, yeah, yeah, yeah. an aggressiveness, I think, that somehow comes through when we, I always, with students, if we're talking about the Ramones, I say it's very important that it's all right. downstroke. <laughs> if, if, if you do alternate, you know, not that there's nothing wrong with alternate picking, but sometimes it's, it'll, it'll be a subtlety that can really, really, um, you know, really selling the material, selling that song, uh, it can make a big difference. So it is, yeah. it's definitely a great technique. And we have lessons on the side, of course, on palm muting, on downstrokes, on alternate picking, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, uh, and we also have a, a, a new, uh, we have a Metal Riffs collection. A lot of the songs we're doing today are from that collection. So again, go to the site afterwards and confer with the specialist. Um, and Kubrick Lover, 1972, I recognize that moniker. Uh, he says, is using a capo a good idea for metal? Um, That's a great question. I mean, I can't think of any riffs off the top of my head, but um, again, we've got no rules. So uh, you can absolutely create a metal riff with a capo if that works. I think... I think mostly in metal, we like to explore, right? Like different tunings, um, you know, different different sounds. So a capo is not out of the question, but a lot of times, like like Eugene said, we're gonna drop tune our guitar, like you did drop D. Um, we might drop tune, uh, depending on the riff, we could be in standard, but it's gonna be more of those lower notes. But I don't, again, there, are, there might be some riffs out there that we use a capo and you can definitely explore and write some metal riffs with a capo. 
I love that. I love that. We advise you, by the way, be be the person that starts writing metal riffs with a capo. I think that'd be fantastic. Or another trick is if you drop, say, your low E string down to a lower, or maybe say you drop your two low strings down a step or two and then put a capo up a little higher, you can really, really trick the ear and the eye because now you've got these really low notes uh, running open, but you're playing higher up the neck. So be creative by all means. And also this yeah. sort of answered Mark Petten, uh, who's watching on Facebook. His question was, what drop or alternate tunings are common in metal? Uh, obviously that drop D where you just take the one string down, but what else is, uh, what else is out there, Sydney? Uh, drop D, I think we've got um, like D standard, right? We've got something like that. I'm trying to remember right. off the top of my head, drop C, drop C, drop, yeah. drop C sharp. Um, depending on what on what songs you're learning, you you might have to explore that. Um, but yeah, it gets pretty fun because I think, especially if you've been playing guitar for a while or you're used to those open chords, you've been playing some power chords for a while, and maybe you want to like explore. This kind of gets us out of that box. So if you're if you're in an open tuning or a drop tune, now your your G chord and E chord that you know so well don't they don't work, right? And you have to kind of <laughs> start making up your own ways of playing. And I think this can be really cool creatively on like how to how to like come up with your own riffs and just explore. Um, so that I love drop tunings myself, um, but I don't think I have enough guitars for all the drop tunings that I want to use. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to send some. Um, they, they leave me alone in the building on Wednesdays. Um, <laughs> But yes, I, I think, and also with drop tunings, one more thing, or an open tuning, it forces, it actually, it's a really healthy way to force your, your theory thinking. You actually, it, yeah. it really kind of helps you think through different intervals and, and harmonies and, and how, how chords are built. So you can have a lot of fun learning a bunch of great cool metal tunes, yes, but at the same time, it actually does help your brain and your fretboard knowledge. So that's a, it's a great thing to, to, to look into. Okay, oh, hope, uh, hopefully Lamar is still with us because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's her riff. Go again, Sydney. We're going to hear Holy Diver by Dio. Ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> power chords all the way power chords all the way <laughs> now and then you taught this on the site so when, when yes. not if but when they go to learn holy diver by dio on the site you're the one i will be the one teaching you how to play holy diver <laughs> and what do you remember about any specific techniques on this riff that you that you went over on the lesson um, one of my if favorite anything. techniques, yeah, there's a lot of techniques in all, in all these riffs, um, but one of my favorites is is the gallop, right? So we're working with that gallop there. And they're incorporating that throughout the whole riff, but that's just a down, down, up. So that can be tricky to get down if you're just working on some, you know, alternate strumming, um, but... Yeah, it, it, it's a really cool tactic, especially if you're using that palm muting that we talked about before. Super fun. Super fun. Yeah, also, <laughs> tons of titles and riffs comes to mind. As soon as I hear that palm muting, that gallop strumming, it's like, oh, oh, yeah, oh this, man. Or does it sound like Barracuda by Heart yeah. or, or the Immigrant Song, right? There's uh, yeah, so just, many. It's just, it's so many. So, so many. And, a, and, and it's great. If you go to the Holy Diver lesson that Sydney teaches, again, you pick up uh, this this technique, but while you're learning a riff. So it kind of makes it less of an exercise, which is a lot of fun. Uh, oh, Here's some fun. of our viewers. I just realized my glasses are, have been on my jacket the whole time. Jesus. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I don't know why. Um, Here's some of our viewers' favorite Sydney lessons. Okay, so Ian Robbins, who's uh, from on Facebook, he says, I have two. Ain't It Fun by Paramore and Sheena is a Punk Rocker by the Ramones, which oh. he's, currently, he's currently working on that one. And he says, I find the power chords challenging to find on the fretboard at speed. So I like the positivity Sydney brings to this new, to me, threshold. Well, thank, that's, well, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. And Greg Stimple on Facebook says, I like her Nazareth hair of the dog. That's a classic. Yeah. Oh, classic. I, I, I should have picked that one. I should have been. Now, Sydney, you know, speaking of you on the site and one of our favorite instructors, uh, you have office hours now, correct? Yes. Yes. Office hours on what, Mondays. On Mondays. At what, what times? Uh, Mondays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, there you go. So if you have even more follow-up questions, specific questions for Sydney, you can find her there. Yeah. Um, and uh, but but for now, back to me. Okay, I've got one more riff, <laughs> uh, and I remember the first time I heard this one, uh, and I loved it because there's there's a bend in it in the riff. Uh, so this is Stigmata by Min, uh, Ministry. Though. <laughs> Love 
that. I love that. You got a half step bend. Of course, as a country guy, it's really exciting. Uh, but I remember when I first heard it, I remember thinking, can they do that? This power chord rip, again, is a power chord with a single note. So we have a minor third. We go from B to D. It's technically a minor key. And then bending up to the... And also, I love this. I downloaded on the Mustang, I downloaded the preset of the tone for this song that, that uh, Dylan's probably the one who made it. And it has a bit of an octave pedal on it. So it's got this, of course, it's more of an industrial tone uh, than, than some of the earlier ones we've been playing. But And also, if you remember from the record, I think it's every third time they play the riff, the, the drums do this thing where it makes it seem as though they drop a beat. So it, nice. you think it's odd meter, but it's not, which brings me to your, in, your, your main inspiration for guitar, Jimmy Page. Ooh, right, because yeah. let's talk about, so this reminds me that, and again, when I was first learning Zeppelin, I was, as we were saying before we went live, I, it forced me to learn a lot of theory and a lot of things about time because Page would play against time well, bottom, they would be do, doing two different things. Right. And that's a really, really good thing to get used to. What can you tell us about that and some of these other things that you learned by, uh, from Jimmy Page when you were, when you were uh, coming up? Uh, yeah, I think, I think for the style of Jimmy Page, I definitely learned how to uh, play riffs you know, properly and, and the importance of, of like having a good riff in a song, right? like having a good hook. It's cool if you got your riff, but you got to make sure you pull your audience in. Um, so all of our favorite Zeppelins, most of them, they all they all do that really well and they hook you in, uh, whether the guitar is coming in first or the drums or whatever, but they, they do a really good job about, um, you know, keeping those riffs going strong. And of course, all the musicians are fantastic, um, you know, incredibly talented musicians. But I, I think I've just loved that about Zeppelin. I think that's what got, got me hooked because, I, mm -hmm. I, man, I heard those Zeppelin riffs and I was like, I gotta pick up the guitar. I don't wanna play any <laughs> other instrument, I gotta pick up a guitar. <laughs> this one's <Yeah>. the coolest. <laughs> yeah, and the, one more thing about that ministry riff is, is it, it start, it's almost all on the up, it's on the, on the and right. up. So. <laughs> Da, da, da. Yeah. And so it's it's kind of it's not all sort of this down plotting thing. It kind of has a bit of a dance and a groove to it, which is which is really really hip. Okay, you're gonna take us out on one last riff, another Judas Priest one. You've got another thing coming. Nice. <laughs> Play it again. No way. Play it again. <laughs> Great chords here. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Cool chords. Cool chords. Uh, and, and that's what's, by the way, when you're doing that tune, there's a lot of pointing at the audience while you're singing. There's yeah. a lot of pointing. Kind of <laughs> there's foot room up for on, it. The on the monitor. Yeah. yeah. yeah you got another. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of. <laughs> yeah, you've got room for if you're holding those power chords, you know, this frees mm -hmm. up this hand. So just, that, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah, a lot of this. Yeah. <laughs> you can direct traffic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's time to now uh, uh, go into some homework here. So, uh, do you have some homework you want to sign uh, uh, at the top, off the top of your head? Uh, sure. Or, or yeah. You want to go? Okay, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Let's see. Um, okay, so if you're just kind of getting started on guitar, um, maybe maybe you're just joining us today and this is your first time. Um, I would say let's start with some like maybe palm muting style, right? So on any chord you like, whatever chord you're working on right now, go for some palm muting. Remember, we're gonna lay our palm flat on guitar. <laughs> And just go for some even strums there. Um, I'd say if you're, you know, intermediate, you're 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 already experienced with guitar. Um, maybe I'd say do one of the riffs. Maybe something like Crazy Train would be a cool riff. Um, Play that one for us one more time, please. Yeah, Crazy Train is the <laughs> right. So we've got a lot of down picking, so that's that's pretty even there. But you're gonna have a lot of finger movements here, so I think that'll be great at isolating and working on our finger movements. Um, and for for advanced, um, let's see, what could we do? I would say even um, the the Dio song, right? We did Holy Diver. Mm -hmm. Work on that that gallop strum. That is such a huge huge um, technique that we got to have for for these metal songs, uh, and and that's just gonna help us get going on that on that gallop. Yeah, and that triplet feel in that gallop also helps us with other idioms too. It helps us with our our, our swing feel, but believe it or not, so right. it's something that kind of it actually carries over into other genres uh, really, really well. We have something coming in right now from Eric Lindsay. He says, "My daughter's favorite Sydney lesson <laughs> is see you at the finish line." Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yes, cool. I mean I, I I I love metal at heart, but man, that was a really fun lesson. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you've, you've got a fan out there. Uh, okay. Now, okay, as I mentioned, Dylan's not here with us today, uh, but he did record us a message before the show to announce this week's giveaway winner. So, yes, we're still giving gear away, and Dylan's still going to do it. So, without further ado, take it away yet one more time, Dylan. All right, here we go. Are you guys ready for this? Is everybody ready? Am I ready? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm ready. Here we, am I live? I'm live right now. Okay, here we go. Hey! Everybody, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there this week. However, you've been left in great hands. Sydney is an incredible player, an incredible teacher. And uh, I Thanks. taped this segment just so I could be involved, just because I wanted to be involved. <laughs> Eugene is important too. However, I need to announce the Fender Play giveaway winner. So every week we give away a free piece of gear to a lucky Fender Play subscriber simply for using Fender Play for a minimum of 21 minutes, right? Or three seven-minute sections called streaks. Now... All you have to do to be automatically entered to win is simply use Fender Play for a minimum of 21 minutes. You can Then you can pick from a guitar, basses, amplifiers. There's all kinds of gear. And I might get to say your name at the end of the show. Do you guys want to hear who won this week? I'm going to bring my own fanfare. Yes. Here we go. It's William F. William F. William F. William, congratulations. You know... uh, I can't wait to see what you picked. New guitar, bass, amp, whatever you choose. Congratulations. I hope you posted on the site in the Fender Play community. Now, there's new stuff on the site. New stuff every week. Great new song. It's apropos to this time of year. It's Merry Christmas, Everybody by Slade. <laughs> so that's a toe tapper for the whole family, right? And then uh, you guys might have talked about the metal collections. Uh, there's metal riffs galore in that collection one fantastic one space lord by monster magnet right so we've got uh, anyways i could go on i digress <laughs> it's been fantastic i can't wait to see you guys next week it's back to you in the future oh why thank you so much dylan <laughs> and and you know even though you're not here you, you still have to be corrected. We're actually not going to do a live show next week. We're not doing a show. We're going we're gonna to take the day off for the holidays and, and get that, that turkey repair or, uh, repaired or prepared or <laughs> your vegan ball of whatever it is you, you know, you're having. So, um, so Dylan, uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we know you meant well, buddy. Okay, so, and by the way, that Slade song, Sydney, who teaches that Slade song on the site? If you're checking out the Slade song, it'll be taught by me. <laughs> We're all so lucky. That's Correct. That, that is I, what a great band, Slade. They have tons of catchy riffs and tunes, by the way. So if if you're not hip right. to Slade, check them out because that's. In fact, a lot of '80s metal bands covered a lot of Slade tunes from right. the '70s. A lot of people don't know it, so uh, so a lot of that stuff will sound familiar to you. Okay, so um, but a, a huge thank you uh, to to you, Sydney, for coming out and helping us with our riffage. Thank you yeah, very, no, very much. No, thank, thanks for having me. It's been super fun, and yeah, this, these are my all my favorite songs. So I'm super happy to be here. Well, epic metal riffs with my, yeah. from an epic teacher. So thank you oh, so much. Now we want to hear what you have. No, what do you have coming up? Plug away. Uh, what do I have coming up? Uh, mainly, yeah, I'm just I'm just writing music myself. Um, you'll find a lot of my a lot of my lessons on play. You know, I've got office hours on Mondays at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, so you can you know check out those. We're actually it ties into this. We're really talking about power chords in the office hours. So we're we're diving deep into these power chords. You know what what it takes to create them. Different types of power chords you can play. If if power chords scare you, we're we're talking about how to make them a lot easier and a lot less scary. Um, and we just want to get you rocking. I think there's a lot of a lot of um potential and power chords and it gets you playing across the guitar and i think that's so important as a player it just it gets you across that fretboard that's a great tip in fact just want to remind everyone when you talk about office hours that's in the fender play community on facebook yes. specifically so that's the where of it but yeah power chords you're right they really once you you get that you get that hand position that fret hand position going on it unless there's so many songs you can play right um you know especially I'm a big Ramones fan, so that's where it starts for me. But <laughs> but you're right, and you end up covering a lot more of the, the the fretboard than you were originally if you're just playing your open position chords. And here now, all of a sudden, you're kind of you're all over the place, which which actually kind of opens up the guitar. Yeah. So yeah, into those power chords, everybody. Into the so we're off again. We're off next week uh, for Thanksgiving, but keep practicing, and we'll be back with another episode on Wednesday, December first. So until then, we'll we'll see you at the same time, same bat channel. Everybody, let's go out on a, on a big G chord on the count of four. And if you, you don't have your guitar or your, or your distortion pedals out, hit a capital G, a big distorted G on your <laughs> keyboard in the comment section. One, two, three, four. <laughs>